In Myanmar history, accounts of early Bagan have some of the strangest tales. This is partly because the period's history was heavily mixed in with legends and myths, passed down through oral tradition or other older written accounts. Burmese and British historians are able to verify some of these characters as historical figures through references with stone inscriptions and other artifacts, but many remain in the myth and the fantastical. However, few tales are stranger than that of the Tangdu Jimin, the farmer king, although more popularly remembered by the Burmese public as the Cucumber King. According to the royal chronicles compiled by the court historian Ukala, around 956 CE, King Tengko of Bagan was out on a hunting trip. At some point, he was suddenly separated from his royal retinue. Thirsty and exhausted, the king broke into a nearby farm where he began to eat the cucumbers there. The farmer, upon seeing the intruder breaking in and consuming his crops, proceeded to assault him. By the time the royal retinue had arrived, the king had been beaten to death. As the farmer was simply protecting his crops and had technically defeated the reigning ruler by right of battle, he was, well, crowned king. Now, this account is most certainly based on a fairy tale due to similar stories appearing in Thai, Lao, and Khmer tales. The Cucumber King's regal title, Nya U Sorahan, has appeared in stone inscriptions, which meant that, at the very least, his name is a historical one. Most historians believe that the king was likely of common birth, and the queen and the court had raised him to the throne to prevent political unrest, and more likely that the slain king, Tengko, was not very popular. Whatever the case, the importance of the story is that it established an unofficial rule of the Burmese royal line of succession, to kill the king to become one. Compared to the divine right of rule in many other countries, kingship in Buddhist societies is considered to be the result of karma accumulated throughout many lifetimes. Following the model of the ancient Mauryan king, Ashoka the Great, the Southeast Asian Buddhist king's legitimacy is generally divided into secular and religious support. On the secular side, the king needed the support of the warrior caste or the military who would defend his people and enforce his authority. This comes from the king's historical role as part of the leaders of the warrior caste called Mimyo. It is also called Katya, influenced by the Vedic Kshatriya. Because of this, the nobles and warriors are sworn to the reigning monarch as an individual, and whatever oaths or promises that the previous monarch had made does not bind his successors. This is meant to state that the king was a leader accepted by his subjects as much as the karma that had led him to his position, and that any noble or leader that did not accept it had the right to challenge the throne. On the religious side, the Sangha are essential to sway the Buddha's masses that the king is righteous and rules according to the Dhamma, the teachings of Buddha and the universal moral order. The king who rules solely with military force is generally deemed as a wicked tyrant and is represented in the Buddhist phrase the Yandum Yongaba under Min, meaning king or lord, but generally refers to any authority figures. On one hand, they can be your most powerful patron on the other, one of the most dangerous threats to your life. Ashoka's pre-Buddhist reign, particularly the bloody conquest of the Kalinga War, is often cited as an example. In Burmese history, the most commonly cited example is King Tohambwa of Ava in the 1530s, who was described as a bloody savage by Burma and Shan accounts, and he was only able to keep his reign through military prowess alone and was recorded to have persecuted and killed some 300 Buddhist monks who had protested against him. On the other hand, a king who was far too focused on the support of the Sangha is considered to have abandoned his secular responsibilities of governing and looking after the lay people. The royal chronicles are generally kinder to such monarchs, but they are often forced to step down and focus fully on religious matters by the rest of the court, or, alternatively, they are manipulated by the leading chief ministers. There are a number of examples, 
but one of the more well-known ones is the reign of the Mengdo Bodoki of the restored Han Thawadi kingdom in the 1750s. He was able to unite the various Mon, Burma, Shan and Kiyin factions in the southern kingdom. But his later heavy focus on religion left most of his responsibilities to his chief minister, Banyadala. After a mere seven-year reign, he abdicated, or was forced to in some versions, to focus on religion. As a result, kings are expected to be able to balance these two, and rulers that could not risk bringing disaster to the realm.